So the next of the devices we're going to be discussing are the nonlinear modulators. So the nonlinear modulator looks like this. This is the flow diagram. You have the message that you're interested in. So this is your message. It has some baseband frequency that contains the information you want to send. And then you have your cosine wave, and it has a carrier frequency, omega c. Now we will take those, and we will add on the top, we will add the message and the cosine. And on the bottom, we will uh, subtract the message and the cosine. Then we will pass these through. We will pass these two signals through nonlinear devices. Once we've passed those two signals through the nonlinear devices, we will uh, add in the top one and subtract the bottom one, put them through a bandpass filter. And what we're going to see is that we should have, at the very end, we should have our message being multiplied by our cosine with our carrier frequency. So now recall, what is a nonlinear device? Well, uh, if you just think of a transistor, right? We, had, we talked about many different regions that you can operate your transistor in. So if you took your electronics class or think back to that, you should remember that um, when you have a nonlinear device, that's basically any time when your IV curve is, is not linear. And so uh, if you have a transistor, right, you could operate your transistor, you could uh, bias it in such a way that you operate it in this saturation region, which is something you hopefully remember. And if not, this diagram uh, sort of explains the different ways you can operate a transistor. And if you operate it in that saturation region, uh, you'll have some, some non-linearities in your IV curve. So you could imagine in this uh, previous uh, diagram, right, that you're basically just passing these two messages. You could imagine passing it through a transistor uh, that's being operated in the saturation region and, and it's nonlinear. So if you're to do this, you will uh, basically pass through your, your message and your carrier wave. And in the top, you're going to uh, add those together. So you'll add the cosine wave to the message. And in the bottom part, you're going to take your cosine wave and subtract the message. So those we will call x1t and x2t. And those are the messages, the, the modification of the original message that we're going to put through the nonlinear device. Now, as a quick review, what happens of what is going to happen when we put this through a nonlinear device? We're going to get some kind of complex equation, and it, uh, it's going to be uh, simple for us to model this nonlinearity as a power series. So uh, go take a look at the Wikipedia article on power series. But basically, you can write uh, a nonlinear equation. You can write it as this type of, of sum where you have a sum coefficient, a1, a2, and so on, being multiplied by you know x to the power of n, uh, 2, 3, and so on till n. And you, you sum it up to infinity, and you, you can approximate some nonlinear function like this. So when we pass our message through the nonlinear device, it's, it'll be uh, convenient for us to model this signal. So we have this x1, it passes through here. It'll be convenient to model y1 as a power series to account for those nonlinearities. So if we we're going to do that, let's, let's think about how we could approximate this y1 of t, where x1, which is our cosine plus our message, it passes through a nonlinear device. Let's see how we can model this or approximate y1 of t after it's gone through the nonlinear device. So from the Wikipedia article, we know we, it should be this uh, summation, infinite summation, and we should have some coefficients uh, multiplied by uh, some x, which is, is your variable. OK, so uh, for us, in this case, let's say that our, our truncated power series approximation, let's, let's just deal with uh, the first two terms. And, and we'll be able to uh, understand our, our whole process just most simply by just considering the first two terms instead of dealing with all the way out to n. So I'll say that our truncated power series approximation can be accounted for by dealing with the first two terms. So we'll say a times xt plus b x squared of t. Uh, so basically, right, these two terms <coughs> where our a not right, this one is equal to zero. So we'll approximate this uh, using these first two terms. And we'll do the same thing for, for y2. So both y1 and y2, after they pass through this nonlinear device, we'll uh, approximate them using a truncated power series. Of course, there would be more if we wanted to model it exactly. But uh, as we go on, you'll see that uh, just by taking the first two, we'll be able to clearly understand how this modulator works. 
So we've approximated now, we've approximated our X1T. It goes through a nonlinear device, and now we have approximated it using this truncated power series. And then on the bottom in green, we have this X2. We put it through a nonlinear device, and again, we approximate it using this truncated power series. Now, when we put them together, they both went through this nonlinear device. Now we have Y1, Y2, and they're going to go into another summing device. And when we sum those together, we're going to make a new signal Z, which is a sum uh, or a, a subtraction of Y1 minus Y2T. So this uh, summer is uh, uses takes one of them as an inverse so that it uh, uh, computes the result as a subtraction. So we'll have this new signal ZT, which is Y1 of T, Y2 of T. And if you uh, do this, <clears throat> then you will arrive here. And I believe this should be a subtract sign here. And so now we have Y1 of T minus Y2 T. And if we want to, we can uh, continue to examine this a little bit more. So we have X1 here, and we know what the X1 is. And then we have X2 in our Y2 equation, and we know what X2 is. So let's put those results in and notice that if we substitute our original X1 and X2 in to our approximate truncated nonlinear uh, power series approximations, we arrive at a Z term that has in red our X1 here, and then in green down here we have our X2. Now, <clears throat> what happens if we take this, so this is X1, what happens if you take X1 and square it? So if you square these, you will get uh, several terms, collect those terms, you'll have the two in the middle, and if you do this for both of them, this is the expansion of the squared term. So this second term in the nonlinear approximation, if you square it, we arrive at these two as the expansion. Now putting the expansion in, so we'll put the expansion in here and we'll put the expansion in down here. Now we're still working with our Z signal where we have are taking our Y1, which is in red, and our Y2, which is in green. So we're taking Y1, subtract Y2, We've taken our X1 signal, placed it, put it in place of where our X1 was in our approximations. And we're working towards solving this whole uh, set of equations. And we're gonna see that some of these terms start to fall out as we uh, move forward with our substitutions. So we then uh, take this and uh, we uh, distribute the minus sign through here. So the minus sign will make the first term minus, and then the minus here goes in here, and this turns it into a minus. Going on, we can remove all these brackets and distribute again the minus term. So the minus will make this minus, make this a plus. Uh, it'll make this first term minus, plus, and minus, and that's what has happened down here. And now we're starting to get somewhere. So it looks like if we're seeing this, a bunch of these terms are going to start canceling out. So now that we've substituted in our X1 and X2, we expanded the terms and we started substituting and simplifying our equation. We've arrived at this point and we should see that, okay, great. Our Z of T, which is uh, Y1 minus Y2, is going to have a bunch of terms that are going to cancel out. So that first term, right, these two, uh, are going to cancel out. So this is going to go away. And then these terms, this is a, a plus this term and a minus this term. So that's going to go away. And then these last terms is also going to be a plus and minus. So those terms are going to go away, simplifying our ZT down to this. And then furthermore, we can see that these terms are actually quite similar. So our overall Z of T is 2AM of T plus 4BM of T. And this A Right, this was a coefficient from our power series. <clears throat> and our B is also a coefficient from our power series. So by modeling the nonlinear devices and as power series, two-term power series approximations, substituting those back in and making this subtraction, we have determined that our ZT term 
it has uh, one term, this first term, which appears to contain the message being multiplied by some constants, and then a second term, which contains the message being multiplied by a cosine wave with our carrier frequency. So this is good. So in the next video, we're going to see why this is good and how this will ultimately work to give us a nonlinear modulator.